Good morning. Dr. Matt, thank you so much. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you here today. Uh, and it's also a pleasure and an honor to share the, uh, the podium with uh, Drs. Onikpo and Gilpin. Um, I am hoping that today we can have a good conversation about the maritime space in Africa. Uh, and in furtherance of that conversation, I wanted to start by making three points. My first point is enough with the threats. And I will talk about each of these in turn, but enough with the threats. Number two, it is time for the institutions of maritime security cooperation to work together with the states and the states to work together with the institutions of maritime security cooperation to engage in the process of strategic development and implementation. And number three, we must all engage in the international commerce of ideas surrounding the best practices, the lessons learned, the failures, and the in-between regarding maritime security and maritime security cooperation. So let me start with my point about the threats. Why do I say enough with the threats? Well, let me start by asking you a few questions. I always like to know who I'm speaking with, and so if you'll show your hands, can you tell me who among you have responsibility for the maritime domain? Who works in either the Navy or a maritime uh, related component? Okay, so relatively few. But now tell me who among you have heard a talk before on the threats facing the maritime space in Africa? We can all probably list them. But how many of you have heard a talk on the threats in the maritime space? But how many of you can tell me what the threats are? Piracy. IUU fishing, trafficking, narcotics, weapons, humans, antiquities. We all know them at this point. But if we keep just focusing on the threats, we're never going to get anywhere. The great strategists of all times have told us that there are three main components of strategy. Dating back to Sun Tzu and on to Klaus Fitz and onwards, we always hear that there are three elements. Number one, we must know our opponents. Number two, we must know ourselves. And number three, we must know our terrain. If we only focus on our threats, we're only getting a third of the way there towards a strategic approach to dealing with them. So now I want to encourage us all to take action on those second two points. The object of uh, today's talk, I think, will be to highlight what it means to know ourselves and what it means to know our terrain. So let me talk about ourselves first. Now, I always say this, it is incredibly, almost humbling uh, to stand before a group of Africans and talk about African challenges as an American. I am never going to understand the threats, the challenges, the difficulties the way you will. Um, so I come at this with as little hubris, as little arrogance as possible, and I come at this with the notion that we have had in America to face some of the exact same threats and challenges in the last 10 years as well. Um, and I got to be honest, we have not done a very good job at times. And one of the biggest things that we were lacking uh, in very recent memory was knowing ourselves. And we discovered this in 9-11, we discovered this in various maritime disasters, and we suddenly realized that we had not figured out yet how to work as a single unit within the United States to confront, to first understand, and then confront uh, the threats we face. So one of the things that has been happening in the last few years in Africa and elsewhere um, that has been really productive um, is to start knowing ourselves by engaging in whole of government processes. A whole of government process is one in which, in a repeatable, documentable fashion, the different agencies with responsibility for the maritime space all come together uh, to collaborate on governing that maritime space collectively. Um, we often hear about silos or stovepipes or some other uh, sort of vector that means that one agency can be completely blind to what all the other agencies are doing even in the same space. So the Navy doesn't know what the Marine Police are doing. The Marine Police don't know what the Maritime Administration is doing. The Maritime Administration doesn't know what the Fisheries Department is doing, and the Fisheries Department has no clue what the Port Authority is doing. That doesn't work. 
It never gets us to the point of actually having maritime security because everybody's operating on their own. So a whole of government process brings all the people with joint responsibility for the maritime space together and engages in a process where you get to learn yourselves. You get to know who's doing what, what are we trying to accomplish, and how can we work better together. So there are three reasons that these whole of government processes begin to work. The first is clarity. People know what their roles are, they know what each other is supposed to be doing, and they know what the end goal is supposed to be. The second is efficiency. Um, too often, I see three or four or five or even more agencies within the same state, and this is true even in the United States, it's true in the EU, doing exactly the same thing. Um, the amount of economic waste that occurs by several different agencies trying to accomplish the exact same objective is overwhelming. So efficiency is the second reason that these whole of government processes begin to clean up and clarify exactly how the maritime space should be governed. And the third is effectiveness. It is incredibly empowering and encouraging when suddenly you are able to get what you're supposed to do done because you're not working against yourself. Um, it is encouraging when you can work together with ag other agencies and actually make something occur. And so effectiveness uh, is the third reason for this whole of government approach. Now, if this is of interest, if this is something that uh, you want to look at, um, this is not exclusive to the maritime space. This uh, whole of government process is applicable in any context. And the Africa Center, together with um, some of our partners in the US government, actually worked this past year on developing a template for how to go about setting up a whole of government process. So I commend that to you. Um, and if you're interested, you can approach one of us and we can uh, direct you to it. It's an incredibly useful guide with pretty specific steps on, on how you can uh, begin to establish a, a whole of government or joined up process. But once you have such a whole of government process, it becomes a lot easier to engage in an honest assessment of your own strengths, your own weaknesses, and your own desires. So what is it that you are able to do, what is it you can't do, and what is it that you want and need to do? Um, and this honest assessment is really a key component of strategy that we need to focus on. We've done a, an honest assessment of uh, the threats, now we need to do an honest assessment of ourselves. The second aspect that has been lacking is the understanding of the terrain. Now, uh, in the introduction, uh, Dr. Honikpo talked about this notion of sea blindness or sea phobia uh, that has pervaded for years. And I, I'm pleased to say I don't think that it is the right term to use anymore. Africa is no longer sea blind. Maybe it's because of the threats, maybe it's because of uh, the sort of drama of piracy, but regardless, most states at this point are much less sea blind than they were even five years ago. Um, but there's still an added aspect that needs to come into play, which is that um, states need to understand not just that they have a maritime domain, but what its actual value is to them and to others. This is a phenomenon I often call now wealth blindness. We understand that there is something there, but we don't know what it's worth. Uh, unfortunately, those who do know what it's worth are those who wish to do it harm. Criminals see the, the wealth in the maritime space and they exploit it. Now it is time for states themselves to see the wealth in the maritime space and work to enhance and harness it for themselves. So in some ways you could say that maritime security has been in some ways mistakenly seen for too long as just being about protecting the maritime space against external threats. Instead, I suggest that maritime security should mean to all of us protecting the maritime space for the enrichment of the state and the betterment of the population. Switch it to be a positive because that is how we can not just constantly be fighting against the threats, but actually be working to turn the, uh, the maritime space into a genuine enhancement of the governance and the economy uh, of the entire nation. So, when we engage in strategy, it is important to know what we have in order to know what we need to protect. And it is important to know where we are in order to know where we want to go. So I say enough with the threats. Let's work together to actually move things forward and not just counter what's bad. 
Um, and to this end, I also point your attention to another template that the Africa Center has worked together with other partners in the US government and in Africa to produce. Um, it is a wonderful template on how you actually go about producing a joined up maritime domain strategy. And if you're interested in it, we can provide it to you. But it is um, really quite specific in terms of asking what questions uh, need to be asked, not just of uh, whoever's leading the process, but of all those stakeholders who take an interest, of the ports, of the fisheries, of the uh, customs and border, of the marine police, of the Navy, etc. cetera. Um, and that also includes other institutions that perhaps don't have a purely maritime focus, the tax authorities, the lawyers, the prosecutors, the judges, uh, even the prisons, uh, who all have a stake in not just securing but enhancing the maritime space. So enough with the threats. Now, let's move on to this next point about the institutions of maritime security cooperation working together with states and states working together with the institutions of maritime security cooperation on strategic processes. Around Africa, there is now a cascading set of strategies. We have the Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy 2050, which sets forth a vision for the entire continent's maritime space. Below that, we have inter-regional and regional uh, strategies all around the continent, from uh, the Djibouti Code of Conduct, the Yaoundé Code of Conduct, ECOWAS, ECAS, uh, the Gulf of Guinea Commission, uh, the Indian Ocean Commission, and others all have uh, multi-state strategies. But within those multi-state strategies are still states. And one of the things that I have found when talking with states directly about securing and uh, developing the maritime space is that too often the first approach is to point a finger and say that's no longer our job, that's the CIC Yaoundé's job. No. No. Uh, the finger pointing has to stop because um, the only way that CIC Yaoundé works is if the states take on their own responsibility. And the only way that states are going to actually benefit from CIC Yaoundé is if they are fully engaged in both the strategic process of developing strategy, but also implementing it constantly in the maritime space. So we've had all these institutions created through these joined up collaborative efforts. And so there's two aspects to this. One, we need to keep the national uh, efforts moving forward, but also within those institutions, they need to start becoming self-aware uh, so that they can say, look, these are our roles, these are our competencies, this is what we can reasonably do, and this is what the states are going to have to keep doing. And so this discussion really needs to start taking place uh, where clarity of roles, clarity of responsibilities um, is hashed out in a way that means that everybody's working together and not just pointing fingers at each other. So in some ways, uh, the institutions of maritime security cooperation could now themselves start benefiting from the strategic process of, no process of knowing their opponents, knowing themselves, and knowing their terrain. And in their case, the terrain also includes uh, knowing the, the dynamics of the member states. Uh, so we do need uh, to, to start focusing on this next step. Um, and again, I highly recommend uh, the, the template uh, that, that uh, ACSS has put together. Um, but I'll close that portion with saying that in some ways what we have to do now is, uh, and I'm, I'm stealing an expression from the Middle East, we have to play the hammer. Um, we've got all these different pieces, but they don't all quite fit together just yet. And we need to, to essentially work together to bang them into place so that we have a truly functional architecture for strategic maritime security cooperation uh, at the continent level, cascading all the way down to the national and local levels. Finally, I said that we need to engage in the commerce of ideas surrounding the maritime space. Now this also uh, is a point where I say there is no room for hubris. We can't think that we know what's right and what uh, is the best way to do things. The maritime space is always changing. The environment itself is changing, fish stocks are moving, uh, threats are evolving, uh, there are new um, mechanisms for engaging in crime, um, and we are constantly facing new challenges. So we can never get uh, arrogant about how much we know. Um, and we always have, have room to learn. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot that we need to recognize uh, that is good. And we need to actually value what we've done that is productive. 
Um, and I would say that uh, there is no space on Earth uh, that is more interesting and engaged at the moment with developing new frontier mechanisms for maritime security enhancement than Africa. Um, so I think that we can often, if we again focus too much on the threats, become blinded by the fact that there has been a tremendous amount of very good, very productive work that has happened in recent years. That isn't to say that there isn't a lot more to learn and a lot more that can be done. And so I think that as we begin coming past sea blindness, as we begin coming past um, the, the sort of standing up of new mechanisms of cooperation, uh, we also need to start sharing um, both exporting and importing what we are learning. Uh, what has worked and what hasn't worked. Uh, and that includes going around the continent and seeing what portions of the continent can learn from each other. Um, the West learned a lot from the East, and now the East can learn a lot from the West. Uh, but equally, all of Africa can learn a lot from other places, but I would also really encourage you to think about how much other places can learn from Africa. I'm about to, uh, to start working some more. Uh, I, I used to work there, and I'm about to work there again in the Caribbean. The Caribbean is a place, uh, it's, it's an area of islands. So the maritime space is extremely important to the Caribbean. And there are a lot of challenges. It is one of the principal transshipment hubs for narcotics, weapons, humans flowing out of uh, South America and into uh, North America and Europe. Um, but the Caribbean actually could benefit a lot from learning some of the lessons that Africa has confronted and addressed in the last few years. Um, I would actually point to Zone D in, in West Africa. Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and Sao Tome and Principe actually provide an incredibly useful model for what could be done in the Caribbean. Uh, the four states have actually, for the last uh, eight years now, since 2009, cooperated on their maritime law enforcement in a level that really I don't think we've seen anywhere else in quite the same fashion. Um, and there are a lot of really great lessons that could be drawn from that uh, that would be applicable to uh, the Caribbean. Equally, if we look at the Caribbean, there is a treaty, an actual international treaty, the Treaty of San Jose, surrounding maritime security cooperation and other uh, cooperative uh, aspects. Has anyone actually ever been to a conference where the Treaty of San Jose was discussed? Anyone? Okay, if you ever get a chance, I highly recommend it because it is almost always uh, a firework. I mean, it is just uh, an explosion of passion because everybody gets heated about the Treaty of San Jose. It hasn't worked for a lot of people. And uh, I have a friend who organizes conferences and I asked him at one point why every single conference he does on the Caribbean uh, involves a panel on the Treaty of San Jose. It's the exact same panel every time. And he goes, just because it's so much fun. Um, everybody gets so uh, fired up about it. And the reason is that it is something that really matters to people. People recognize that this matters. Um, but they haven't figured out how to make it work. Um, and so I think that uh, I would encourage us all to, to recognize the, the good things that have occurred in Africa, as well as the challenges, and start being willing to share uh, because we all benefit from it. So for all the threats and challenges uh, that have faced uh, Africa over the last years and continue to face it today, um, there are a lot of seeds that have been planted that are beginning to germinate and that are beginning to uh, head towards blossoming. Um, and I think that uh, now is the time to really try to capitalize on this momentum. Um, and part of that uh, springs well beyond the maritime space because if uh, a whole of government process and a maritime strategic development process can work in the maritime space, there's no reason that those same processes can't work elsewhere. Similarly, if there are good and productive mechanisms of cooperation that are happening on the water between operators in different countries in Africa, there's no reason that that can't be put onto land as well. And so I think that uh, in the commerce of ideas, we need to not just think about uh, East versus West, not just think about Africa versus other continents, but also think about the maritime versus the land and start cooperating more effectively to join up that space as well. So 
I will just conclude by saying that um, it has been a pleasure for me over the last few years uh, to be a part of some of these processes that have actually started to have tangible effect. We've seen some of the cooperation starting to actually work on the water, and that is incredibly exciting. Um, and so I hope that we can continue to all work together uh, to join in the process of, of moving this momentum forward. Um, and I hope we can start that today by having a, a robust discussion and continuing uh, on beyond this session. So thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to speaking afterwards.